Hey everyone, it's uh, David Swanson and I'm doing the walkthrough of the RV on the damages before I take it over to Lazy Days tomorrow, which is Sunday, June 18th. Uh, we're going to stay the night in the parking lot uh, just because we have such an early appointment, uh, which is 10 a.m. Eastern Time. But for us, it's uh, I'm staying on Pacific Time since I'm going back out to California and I have to pick up the car at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time, which is like 4.30 Pacific Time. Uh, just for documentation purposes, uh, let me just show you what today is and where we're located at. What is today? It is Saturday, the 17th of June, 2017. Where am I located at? Here's a map of 2725 Mare Street, Orlando, Florida, 32806. And it's actually 2733. The GPS is just off. Um, but I'm at my house, 2733 Mayor Street. Okay, so here's the outside. Um, first thing uh, that I, after I got back to Orlando and started looking, um, I found that paint, the paint job is actually, sorry, it, the sun is so bright, um, I can't see the viewfinder very well, so I'm not sure where the camera's pointed, so I had to look. Uh, the paint is coming off, and this is a brand new paint job. And it's chipping away. Uh, and then on the steps of the uh, coach, this one, the passenger side, is not as loose as the driver's side, but the fiberglass, and Joe at the RV man caught it, um, it's cracking. The fiberglass and the uh, paint is cracking. And he said that it would need new fiberglass work. Uh, that was Joe at the RV man in Colton, uh, California. Uh, once the the lock on the coach is loose. Uh, at times, it feels like it's going to just fall out. Let's open up the screen door here. Uh, and then this is broken. Oh, yet yeah, on this side, it's just so loose, it feels like it, and it's probably, I don't see any, oh yeah, there is a missing screw. That's probably why. I was going to say, I find missing screws all the time, or screws at the bottom of the steps. Uh, we'll get into that once I get inside. Uh, I'm going to have to grab my keys. I thought, forgot. To unlock that one moment. So this is the main storage door, and you can see that the paint is starting to come off from here as well. And then here's the weather stripping that's coming off, and it's just dangling. Uh, in a previous video when I got here, that was this storage area bay is full of water. You'll see that in another video. Uh, I don't know if that's from the weather stripping or from the water leak. And then this is where the uh, portable water, uh, where you fill the uh, portable water tank. Uh, this has melted off and speaking with Joe at the RV man, he said that they installed this upside down and that's why the this is the hot water heater and this is the vent 
uh, for the propane and it melted the, the cap and he said the reason for that is it's because it's upside down. All right, here we are at the wet bay door and uh, you can see, now this isn't paint coming off, uh, but this is paint scratches from me taking a screwdriver to it uh, to open it uh, because it doesn't open. As you can see, the only way I can get this open sometimes is if I push my knee against it. And sometimes it doesn't work. I don't know if I can get it open this time. A lot of, most of the time I can uh, with a little bit of work. Sorry for the jiggly camera. Yeah, it's not gonna open. Uh, but that's another, uh, that's one of the doors that just won't open. So I had a huge problem trying to drain the tanks on our first trip out. It came that way. Then, as you can see on the slide out, and you'll see it more on this side, that it's not flush. Um, more paint that's just, just dull and coming off. And then we come to the window on the slide out, and it's coming off from the inside, the whole frame. Uh, when I was driving back, and I just noticed this, driving back from uh, California, and uh, again, I'm so sorry, the sun's in my eyes, so I can't see where I'm pointing the camera. Uh, and you'll, when we go inside, you'll see that the window's actually really locked. Um, but this was driving, I thought this was going to get torn off, it was so loud. Uh, so, and then you can see the paint job. I don't know if the camera, I, again, I can't see with the because the sun's so bright I can't see if the camera's picking it up because uh, but the paint job on that and then uh, as we come around here here is the paint job on this side it's doing the same thing it's cracking and peeling off and I paid extra I think I paid almost five thousand dollars for a custom paint job Which brings us to the propane tank door. Uh, this has been one of the most frustrating um, things uh, and dangerous. Uh, the propane door does not work. Uh, I had to use uh, a guy, a mechanic at the Flying J uh, in Barstow. Uh, we had to break it open to get it in open the first time, uh, which caused um, using the tools, chipped the paint here. So this isn't the paint from the paint job. This is us trying to get into it uh, to fill the propane tank. But the propane door does not work. Uh, one of the things I want to show you inside is, I don't know, again, the sun is so bright, I can't see the L LCD screen. I'm hoping that the camera's picking it up. Uh, that the propane level is uh, almost empty. It's halfway between empty and a quarter of a tank. Uh, the, the inside sensor that tells me what the propane level is does not work, uh, is off, or it does work, but it's off, uh, grossly off, uh, because the propane tank was mounted so high they couldn't fill this. Uh, and so I spoke with uh, Forest River and they said, yeah, a lot of the RVs came out that way by accident and that to take it in and put washers. Well, it, the sensor inside worked perfect until they had to remount the propane tank and put washers which tilted the propane tank down so that it could be filled. So 
the sensors are off. Uh, and it's most likely the inside sensor and not this sensor uh, because this sensor seems to go, is correct with the amount of propane that is actually being filled in by the propane when it gets filled up. Uh, the propane door. So I'm going to close the propane door. Okay, propane door is closed. Propane door does not open. It has never opened. You cannot, no matter what you do, you cannot get the propane door open, which is dangerous if there's if you ever need to turn it off quickly. Um, but the propane door never worked, and that's why we had to break in. Uh, I did find a way to get the propane door um, open, and I have to crawl under the coach and manually. Uh, let me see if I can get the camera to show you where what I do. I have to stick my hand up here, so I have to put my hand in there, and then I have to push down on the latch manually, and then I can get it open. And that's the only way I can, uh, we could get into the propane and after, and that was probably, I figured that out after probably three times of trying to fill it um, and breaking into this door is the only way I could um, find a way to get that filled because Forest River just kept putting us off on trying to get that fixed. Uh, next comes to the slide out. Uh, once we get inside, I'll talk more about the slide out being off. But as you can see, it doesn't close, doesn't, this is the best that I can get the slide out to push up against. And that's because I have to push it in manually with my hands to butt up against uh, the RV. And uh, right now I have it in pretty tight um, by pushing it in. But there's a gap underneath here, and I, I've got it on the cam on the my DSLR camera. I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick it up, but there's a gap, and in here, when the slide out is out, or no, I'm sorry, when the slide out's in, um, bugs can get in, and not only that, but I found mice can get in, and we'll talk about that once we get inside. Okay, outside brings us to the step. And this step is about to fall off. When you step on it, um, just like the other step, the other step isn't as loose as this one, but this one uh, about to fall off. And uh, over here with the paint, All right, so I'm just looking at my notes on what I need to show you next. So I'll take you up on the roof here. Okay. So first, here's the awning. Uh, the stitches are coming undone on the awning and not only that but the paint is cracking everywhere and if we come down over on this side again stitches are coming undone and the paint and the funny thing is I've only used the awning maybe two, three times and not even have put it all the way out. Um, probably just put out a third of the way out just when it was sprinkling out a couple times in California to dry the dogs off. Come over here. Paint is chipping and cracking. We're going to come to the... This is... I found out this is called Dicor, um, but caulk. And we're going to show you how they, they just did a very messy, uh, unquality unqual uh, job uh, when they did the Dicor, when they caulked. They splashed it everywhere, and it gets worse um, as we go. Cracking.
and then the die core job starts to get bad on this side. Which brings us to this, which is just absolutely horrible. And then they splashed Dicor or caulk everywhere. Never cleaned it up. Bring, bring it around here. They just did a really messy job. And then once we get inside, I'll show you the sunroof. Um, I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick it up, but the styrofoam that's inside the sunroof. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about having to open up the sunroof, which I have not done but need to. Or uh, the mechanics will need to to get the styrofoam out of the sunroof. Uh, and here's the caulking. So there's either two ways of doing it. Uh, Joe at the RV Man in Colton, California said they would do it from the inside out and not do, remove the caulking or the die core. Um, but I'll show you what it's like inside. Uh, just FYI, this is a WeBoost antenna. Uh, it's a cellu it increases your cellular signal. I installed it and I wrapped the ladder first with electrical tape so that two metals don't contact each other so it cuts down on rust. And then I put down uh, self-adhesive cable ties and ran them all along and then this is my caulking job that I did I'll get out see if I can get out of the Sun so I keep this really clean I mean this is something that I paid over a hundred thousand dollars for or pay or close to a hundred thousand dollars and uh, I keep it in really good shape and this is the quality and this is what I get from it. Okay, so let's go on inside. Also, the paint on the door is cracking and coming off, which, I mean, this is a brand new paint job, brand new RV that I paid to have custom painted. And then if I go to resell it, or resell it in a year, or in two years, which I was planning on doing, the resale value is horrible. All right. I've got the AC on because it's very hot here in Orlando right now. Turn on the lights here. Yeah, it's it's actually 101 degrees in here. I just turned on the AC before I started filming. So I apologize for the background noise. Oh, just lost my keys down the sink. There we go. Okay, I have a list. Uh, and I'm just going to work off my list here. So, before I put the slide out, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but if you can see the sunlight and back in the corner over to the right, I'm going to try to kneel down there and see if I can get it. That's sunlight, um, and that's where the mice get in. Uh, I've had two known mice come in. I caught the first one, uh, my cat let me know, and she chased it, and it went underneath the captain's seat. Uh, and then the second one I caught trying to get in. Uh, I heard it, and that's where they're getting in at. And this was out in the Mojave Desert. And Forest River, when I spoke to Dan DeBecky at Forest River, he said, 
It's an RV. Mice get into RVs all the time. <laughs> that was what he told me. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put out the slide out. Okay, the slide out is out. And when the slide out goes in and out, because it's mounted incorrectly, it's gouging up the floor. And it's equal on, on each of the same area of the, uh, of the slide out. So here's where it's, this one's just ripping into the enamel. And then I'm going, okay, keep an eye on that same plank. So we're going to go straight across. And at the same area on the other side where the slide out comes in, it's so bad that it's actually ripping into the floor. And at the same time, because it's off, this flashing that covers the slide out broke and snapped at the bottom um, it was just a really cheap piece of wood so it was like no big deal I mean other than it looks awful but then on this side on the other side on the left side this one I managed to keep although it's it's just hanging there it's completely off but the only reason it's, I, may, I was able to keep it from breaking is that when the slide out goes out, the button to put the slide out out is right here. So I'm able to take my foot and hold it. And that is the only reason why it hasn't broke, uh, hasn't broke um, like the other one did. Uh, the top flashing was actually a very heavy piece of wood and it started warping and you'll see that in another video that I did when it was happening, uh, warping and coming off. And it was only held on by these little staple nails where this piece of wood was probably anywhere about 30 to 40 pounds. And it finally fell off. Uh, my mom, who comes on the weekends from time to time, uh, she wouldn't even sit at the table because she was afraid that was going to fall off. And she was correct, it did, finally. And, um... Alright, so now we're going to come on over to the TV. So this is the main TV. Uh, the main TV never worked on 12 volts. Uh, when it was on 12 volts, all I would get is a few white squiggly lines, and the picture would start shaking within seconds, and then it would go black and then I would have to turn the TV back on and start the whole process over and that would all happen within about five to six seconds. Uh, Cold Forest River uh, spoke with Russ Stahl who was the east, no I'm sorry, the west coast warranty manager and he said well it's not a 12 volt TV that's why it doesn't work on 12 volts. Well it is a 12 volt TV I told him that. Uh, as you can see it's, it goes into a 12 volt socket it's a 12 volt TV uh, I confirmed that with Orlando RV and with Joe at the RV Man, and then also with the new warranty manager for the West Coast, Mike Jahansky, uh, and um, that it is a 12 volt TV and it's supposed to work perfect on 12 volts. But now the TV doesn't work at all, uh, whether it's on 12 volts or on uh, 120 or 110 volts. Uh, which it's on right now is on 110 volts. All you, whether it's on 12 volts or hooked up to, to um, shore power, all you get is a white screen. And no matter, you can hit the, every button, it's just a white screen. So the TV hasn't worked for months, and I haven't been able to get a replacement from Forest River. Uh, also, when I got it, the HDMI sound did not work. So the 
Nathan at Orlando RV hooked up a optical cable uh, to make it work to get sound out of it and that was the only way we could get sound out of it so the TV came broken uh, now let's go over to the uh, uh, I can't think um, my mind the heat must be getting to me the uh, sunroof uh, the sunroof with the styrofoam in it there's styrofoam chunks all throughout the, the sunroof so all you see when you're looking up at a starry sky or a clear blue sky is all these chunks of styrofoam that bounce everywhere and like I was saying outside Joe thinks all you have to do is undo these screws and that the unit will come down and he will be able to vacuum out the styrofoam. But that's just sloppy, un, uh, no quality control at Forest River. Uh, the AC came with no AC filter. Uh, Russ Stahl just told me to go to Lowe's and buy one and cut it to the shape that I needed. But there's this is the thinnest one that they have and it keeps the keeps this from closing all the way so it just looks bad. And being a Mercedes Benz, a luxury item, paying over or close to a hundred thousand dollars, and I shouldn't have to put up with something like that. Okay, right now I have the AC on, and you can see that I have the vents open where the AC is coming through, down to the AC. The reason for that is the coach has central AC ducts, but when I close it to force it to the ducts, I get air out of, actually I don't even get air out of that one anymore. Yeah, it's blocked up with styrofoam. There's styrofoam in the ducting. Uh, in the bathroom here, here's one of the AC vents, and this one actually has cold air coming through it. Uh, and uh, you can see that there's chunks of styrofoam, and I, I kept getting huge chunks, and Orlando RV just said, pull it out, it happens all the time. And But there must be more chunks, because I have a little bit of air coming out of this one, this one must have had all the styrofoam blow out because I got a good amount of air coming through that one. But I have n no, no air coming through this one. No air coming through this one. No air coming through that one. Uh, there's a little bit coming through this one. Ooh, little breeze coming through this one. And... Um, so there's AC in the vents that I can't even get to, or styrofoam in the vents that I can't even get to. Same with the heater. Um, the heater inside the coach works pretty well, but this vent, which is the heater vent in the bathroom, no heat comes through this one. It's just a very light stream of heat. And I'm afraid with whatever's in the duct, if it's styrofoam, that could be a fire hazard. Uh, so I had a major water leak. The water leak, it, the pipe or whatever is leaking is inside this wall inside the bedroom behind the thermostat and the electrical socket and the, this TV. And the water's pouring out from underneath the refrigerator. This is the refrigerator. Um, back under here is, I, I, is the intake where the heat get, where heat or air gets pulled in for the heater. Water was gushing out from underneath here pouring all down here um, and then going underneath out the slide out this way and this got all soaking wet this came off because of uh, the water inside here there's mold growing now or mildew I don't know or maybe they're the same I don't know um, and then you get a distinct mold and mildew um, smell and I'm highly allergic to mold and mildew uh, I've been using my inhaler and using Rhino Quart a lot because of that.
The uh, pantry does not, won't lock, and it also is broken where it won't pull out. So it won't lock and won't pull out. Uh, I had a bottle of Vermont syrup, brand new, huge bottle of Vermont syrup, and this came flying out like this while I was driving, and dumped and spilled everywhere where it flew, flowed, flowed back into the pantry. And of course, this was all full with pantry items. So it was, it took hours to get that, um, to clean it up, not to mention that we were on a long drive. So some of that syrup had already dried up a little bit. And then the syrup completely um, dripped into all the drawers going on all the way down. Okay, the over the table cabinets. I use these two primarily. I rarely use this one. And this is the one that the hardware failed on. Won't stay shut. Um, I tried putting a little wood glue on it. Doesn't, the hardware's just broken. Um, so you, everything comes out of the drawer when you're driving. All right, let's come over here to the kitchen sink. The kitchen sink cover is completely disintegrating. Um, it looks like they just used particle board and then this is just paper. Um, and it's a sink. Why they did that, I have no idea, but it is just completely disintegrating. And this has only been, uh, this started within two months of using the coach, or not even two months, even one month. Um, we're five months in and it's just disintegrating. Uh, the screen on this window fell out while we were driving. Um, I can't get it back in. I don't know if there's a trick or how, but I can't get the screen. It's different from these screens. These screens just pop in um, and they're not very, very, they don't stay into place like this one keeps coming off. And there we go, it popped back in. They just keep popping out. I don't know if it's because of the temperature change or what, but this one uh, is completely different. It doesn't pop in. It's some, I don't know how, you, how they get it in. I have it out in the storage base, so I'm gonna have lazy days Try to fix the screen on that. All right, refrigerator. Uh, the refrigerator temperature, the freezer works perfect. Works great, awesome. The refrigerator, however, you either, the food is either hot, it's in, in the 50s, 50 degree range, 40, uh, high 40s, or it's, 30, it's 32 degrees. It doesn't go below 30 degrees, doesn't go above 30 degrees, it's just plain 32 degrees where your food is frozen. Um, so I told Joe at the RV man, and he said, oh, you just need to play with the thermostat. I said, I have, I've tried it for months. I've went through so many heads of lettuce because I eat a lot of salads, and the heads of lettuce would freeze, and then when the, they thaw out, they just turn into mush. So I would go through tons of heads of lettuce, lots of condiments because they would get too hot like mayo and would have to throw them out. My mom wouldn't eat any of the food because of um, being scared of food poisoning. Uh, so we kept the refrigerator at the stuff in the refrigerator minimum uh, because of that. But then the worst thing is I would have to keep it at the either the super coldest setting uh, just to keep it at 38 degrees but then the freezer, in which I do a lot of dry camping where I'm not hooked up to electrical power, the freezer would be down in the 10 degree range, sucking tons of propane up. So I'd be going through propane like a, like a sieve. It would just be sucking propane up. Uh, Joe said, well, it's the temperature gauge. Um, just fiddle around with that. Well, I did and he still didn't believe me. So I went on Amazon and bought these uh, temperature probes 
where it would uh, watch the temperature on, where I could keep a log of the temperatures on the weather station. And um, I logged it for a week and finally, and then sent it to him and he said, yep, your refrigerator, the temperature, most likely the temperature control board is bad. So I had to do all that just to prove that the refrigerator doesn't work. All right, dinette Cushing. This is, again, th it's just me and my two dogs. And then my mom comes and visits from time to time on the weekends where she usually just stays a Saturday night. Um, but this is where I sit and work. And it's just me and the stitching on the cushions are already coming out. And then this side isn't as bad because Again, it's just me. My mom sits on this one just a few times on the weekend, but you can see it's already starting to come, come off. Uh, they also won't stay in place. You cannot keep these cushions in place. I even put Velcro on them to see if I could get the Velcro to help. But you sit on them for a couple minutes, and then they just start slipping out. Um, so I don't know if it's... That's how it is on all the coaches or just my coach. Uh, propane level. So we were outside and I showed you that it was almost empty. Uh, it is right now, it's showing that I have more than a third of the propane. Um, okay, so here's the LPG button for propane. And it's showing that I have at least um, a, over a third of the propane left. And when it's at and that had just, sorry, my phone's ringing. I'm gonna turn that off here. And it just went from two thirds to a third. And it's right now it's on almost empty. And it used to work perfect until they had to remount it so we could fill the propane tank. And because they had to tilt it with washers, that's why this sensor, I'm guessing, this is why this sensor is now off. Okay, so now let's go over to this drawer here. This drawer, the hardware has completely failed so that it doesn't, won't lock. And so I have to tie it with wire when we drive so it doesn't fly open and break. Not that it's already broken, but um, that's how I keep it from flying open and hitting the dogs while we're driving. Uh, and I'll show you on, the other drawer, on another drawer what I'm talking about, but the hardware has completely failed on this one. This drawer underneath the stove is about to do the same thing. But if you look, and I'm going to see if I can get close to it, there's a little clip that opens up and snaps when, when, this, when this goes in. But on this drawer, sometimes it stays locked. And so I have to take a screwdriver and I can pop it back open. But on this drawer over here, the hardware has completely failed where I can't even pop it back open. Um, I was never able to pop this one back open. This one over here, I'm, I've been able to, but I, I have a feeling it's about to do the same thing as that drawer. So both of those hardware drawers are gonna have to be fixed. Uh, the microwave, this is a microwave and convection oven. The microwave, uh, the convection oven, 20% of the time, I would say 20-30% of the time, when I hit convection and it's in the warming mode to get it up to whatever degree, it squeals so loud um, where even my mom's like, do we need to leave the RV? Is that thing going to blow up? It's tremendously loud and it squeals from the inside. Uh, and then when I microwave, uh, I eat a lot of corn dogs, um, and I usually do two at a time. So I'll put two corn dogs in and microwave them for two minutes. And within about 30 seconds, one mic one corn dog will be there'll be huge burn spots um, on the corn dog, and then the stick will be on fire while the other corn dog is still frozen. So it sets the corn dogs on sets one corn dog on fire while another corn dog is completely fine.
Uh, the hardware on the vent here, I've had to put silly putty. This is just silly putty. But they forgot to put some kind of cap around here so spiders get in. Um, I get mosquitoes and moths as well, but the big problem has been um, spiders. Uh, I've caught spiders coming in, but it wasn't until after I started looking for them to find out where all the spiders were coming from that I found I would find spiders on the screen and then I just put, realized they were coming through that hole. Um, but I would be waking up to, I would have spider bites uh, quite often and then I would find spiders just hanging down in the middle of the night. I'd be watching TV and all of a sudden I'd just see a spider hanging down uh, and they were coming from, from there. Okay, the, uh, I don't know what you call it, the railing, um, siding, whatever you might want to call it. Uh, this one is coming undone, and you can see the nail up here by my finger. That's the nail. Um, I've tried to put it back in. Uh, it's warped, and it's funny because I don't even sleep on this side. I sleep over on that side against the wall here. Uh, for whatever reason, a lot of this stuff is coming undone. It's just bad craftsmanship, uh, I guess. Uh, I've tried to stick it, nail it back in, hammer it back in, or push it back in into the back into the hole, but it just keeps coming off. Um, I put it just a touch, just a little um, Q-tip of Gorilla Glue, um, and that held for I don't know a couple weeks, and finally it came undone again. I didn't want to do too much because according to the manual, if I do too much work, it could void the warranty. So I'm leaving that for the mechanics as well. Okay, the coach has a full water filtration system. Here's the water, this is where the water filter um, is, or where the water filter is supposed to go. They never gave me a water filter. I was supposed to get a water filter. I called um, a RV dealership in Colorado, in Loveland, Colorado, who sells the same kind of coaches and verified that I was supposed to get um, a water filter and then also mats for the floor, floor mats. I had to go buy these at the local auto store um, because I never got floor mats. Uh, I only got one key and I keep getting passed around on the keys. Um, saying that it was supposed to be Orlando RV, the dealership where I bought it from, was supposed to give me the two keys. Uh, then Forest River said no, it's supposed to be Mercedes. Orlando RV said no, it's Forest River. It just goes back and forth. And then the same with a package of uh, touch-up paint. I was supposed to get a package of touch-up paint. Never got that. Orlando RV said they were going to buy or order me some. And uh, then when I called to pick it up, they fired the main, the head maintenance guy, so I never even got uh, got the touch of paint. Um, bedspread. This came with a actually a really beautiful bedspread, uh, but it had a a chemical smell to it, uh, and it said the tag said to wash it in cold water. So I washed it in cold water, and when I pulled it out of my wash machine, it had pretty much disintegrated. It was just strings, just like, just like this, all over it. Complete, and it was just, I mean, it was useless. It was horrible looking. So I had no choice but to throw it away. Um, and I washed it in cold water with one of the Tide Pods, like I do all my clothes. Uh, the sink faucet. They had this, uh, the, I don't nozzle, whatever. Uh, screwed on incorrectly and so it was um, sideways so when I went to unscrew it I couldn't unscrew it because it was so badly screwed on took pliers to unscrew it and as soon as I I didn't even put any pressure on it but it was just like tin foil it just crumbled um, didn't break just crumbled into um, it's, it's like taking tin foil and just tearing it up into little pieces and finding it inside your sink. So, oh, I don't have the water on. This is just leftover water from in the pipes. Um, but it sprays out water, so I can't use the bathroom sink.
the uh, bathroom door, the uh, siding is completely coming off. This one's nice and tight down here. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but the bottom I never really have a problem with. It's a lot of times when you, this comes, I don't know if it's while I'm, you're driving or what, because the door's closed, uh, but this comes off and I'm afraid that when I have a guest over, if this is hanging, it's gonna catch and break. Okay, low heat. We spoke about the low heat in the bathroom. Um, siding in the bathroom. This piece is coming undone. Um, there's a couple other pieces in the coach. I'm just going to skip over, uh, but it's coming undone as well. Uh, my GoPro battery is about dead. I'm at 10%, so I'm going to try to talk faster to get through all this. Uh, bunk area. This side is coming away from the, uh, I can't think of the word, but the, um, the part of the RV where it's coming undone and it's starting to get, it, each day it's getting worse, where if you come over to this side, it's up, snugged up nice and tight. Uh, okay. The left, when I got the RV, the left blinker uh, was did not work, and so I had to take it to Mercedes-Benz. Went back and forth between Mercedes-Benz and Forest River. Mercedes-Benz was amazing. Uh, took it to Sanford. Uh, I believe his name was Teddy. Uh, he was awesome. He fixed it, even though it was a Forest River problem. Uh, he found out it was the problem with the entertainment center. This is the Pioneer Entertainment Center. And he also found another problem. He said that when they installed the Pioneer system, they did not hook it up, they didn't mount it correctly, and they were supposed to mount it to, this is the AC unit that controls the AC for the coach for the driving um, area. And he said they didn't mount it. And so if you touch it, it's going to fall into the vehicle. Uh, he said even a light touch is gonna to do that. And so for months, I had been trying to get that fixed uh, through First with Mike, J Mike Jasinski, and then through Rustall, could not, uh, just got the runaround. Uh, but I had been very careful until we came back from California to Orlando. I uh, got caught in a thunderstorm in the panhandle of Orlando or uh, Florida, and the windows fogged up. And so without thinking, while I was trying to drive through the rainstorm, I put on the defrosters. Uh, and when I touched the defroster, it did um, fall in. Uh, but luckily I was able to pull it out a little bit, um, but it just looks horrible. Um, this came undone, the button, there's a knob that came off of it when it fell in. Okay, uh, then also this has, it doesn't have GPS, but it does have a GPS app that works with your phone. Uh, and then it also has Pandora and um, a couple other apps and DVD where you can watch DVDs. You can't get to it because it says that you have to pull up on the emergency brake, release the emergency brake, pull up on the emergency brake. Well, I asked Teddy at Mercedes-Benz, what am I doing wrong? And he said, you're doing nothing wrong. Forest River forgot to install the emergency brake cable. So that's why it doesn't work. Uh, when we were up on the roof, I forgot to point out, but the antenna, the radio antenna is completely rusted. I can't, I can pick up I'm in Orlando, Florida, and I can pick up about one radio station where I should be picking up more than a dozen, if not more than that, radio stations. Uh, under the seat, uh, there's supposed to be uh, a cushion, um, a foam thing that protects the seat from the wires. Those were broken. Uh, I found that when I was looking at the mouse for the mouse. Uh, also, under the seat, I'm worried, I want Lazy Days to check to see if the mice have caused any damages underneath my seat because that's where I found that one. Um, again, I apologize, I'm talking really fast because the GoPro's about to die. Oh, and so the entertainment center, uh, let me show you. 
get this on radio. Okay, now this radio is completely different from that radio, but we've got sound inside the coach as you can hear. This controls the inside speakers. I'm going to turn on the outdoor speakers. And over there, that's the only speaker that works. This right speaker does not work. There's no sound coming from it. Um, I've tried everything. I've pulled the unit out to look for the cable. I don't think they ever put the cable, installed the cable in it. Uh, when I pulled the slide out in, uh, or put it out, actually, when I put it out, uh, most of the time it blows the fuse. Uh, and when it's on tw uh, 12 volts, I think there's a, an electrical problem with the 12 volt system with the TV. Uh, because when I put, like I said, when I put in the, this, when I uh, pull out the slide out, it blows the fuse. Uh, a couple things before the battery dies, just to show you. Uh, I don't know if the GoPro is going to pick it up, but they try. They put staples in, and then they tried to cover it up. And it just when you're sitting at the table, and I don't think the GoPro is going to pick this up. I have pictures though. Uh, it looks horrible. And then um, also, same with these panels up here. Uh, I'll I'll slice in the section of video where oh they. Okay, so you can see the whiteout. It's supposed to be covering up staples, and they do it on all of these. Okay, the GoPro, at least on the GoPro screen that I'm looking at, isn't showing it. But they have it covered up, and then all of a sudden, they forgot. Let me turn off the light. Maybe that'll work. And then all of a sudden, they just forgot to put cover up these staple holes. They cover all, all the other ones up. And it's not, I know it's nitpicking, but this is a $100,000 item. It's supposed to be a luxury item. It's supposed to be something that is a Mercedes Benz, a Forest River. Uh, it's supposed to be built with quality. And instead, I got very sloppy, very cheap work. Uh, and then uh, the hot water heater. The hot water heater works now because I went to an independent dealership to get it fixed. Uh, but this was about the same time when I caught the propane tank when we couldn't fill the propane tank up. Uh, the hot water heater would not work on electric or on propane. Uh, and it came to find out that the control board for the, pro for the hot water heater uh, was dead, completely dead. So they had to order a new uh, control board and install a new control board. Uh, that was the first month after getting it. Um, so far, I haven't had any problems since they installed the new control board. Uh, it's just one thing after another, but um, that is the walkthrough. Uh, I'll be slicing in other video uh, from when it flooded, pictures, and um, some of the other things that I fixed uh, already. but. That's, that's my walkthrough today. So thanks for watching. Bye.